Hello everyone. This episode is about AWS KMS or Key Management Service. Now KMS is used to encrypt data on AWS. The main purpose of AWS KMS is to store and manage those encryption keys. Now I wrote a blog post about data encryption on AWS that goes hand in hand with this video. You can check that out in my personal blog, thecloudtutorials.com. Here is it. So if you like this content, make sure you subscribe so that you will be notified as soon as I publish a new video on every week. Now here's the outline for today's episode. So we will start by understanding what is KMS and why is it being used in the industry. We will also discuss the main concepts around KMS. Then I will show you a couple of demos on encrypting and decrypting using OpenSSL as well as AWS Encryption SDK. Finally, we'll conclude this video after discussing server-side encryption for AWS services like S3, EBS, and DynamoDB. I'm really excited about this episode. I hope you guys too. So let's get started. Now, why you plan for two demos? In order to understand those demos, it's vital to learn how KMS works. So I dedicated this video to understand the theory part. And in the next video, we will do the demos directly. So if you're already familiar with KMS, skip this video and go to the next one. I will upload it quite soon. Okay, so why do we encrypt our data in the first place? Imagine your database server got hacked. Now that hacker has full access to your client's sensitive data. So if you stored your data in plain text, the hacker can do whatever he wants with the data, right? And usually hackers don't do good things with it. But if the data had been encrypted, the hacker would have a hard time decrypting that data even if he hacked your database server. So encryption is vital, especially if you are dealing with sensitive data. And also there are a lot of regulations like GDPR that enforces you to follow security by design architectures. And of course, encryption is highly recommended for a security by design architectures. Now, when it comes to encryption of your data, you must consider encrypting your data both in transit as well as in data at rest. Now, imagine that you are delivering your website over HTTPS and you have associated a SSL certificate for your domain. So the data that is transferred between your server and the customer's web sub browsers are encrypted. So with the SSL certificate, you encrypted the data in transit. However, as soon as the data reached to the server or the load balancer, or it could be CloudFront, and the SSL is terminated, then you have to deal with the plain text data again. So if you store that data in database, that would be in plain text. Now to avoid that, you got to do encryption at rest. Now there are two main methods. The first one is client-side encryption, where you can encrypt your data at the client side and send all the way to the server or any backend services like S3, EBS, Redshift, etc. And the second method is server-side encryption. In server-side encryption, you let your backend services to encrypt the data and manage those keys on your behalf. So in client-side encryption, you encrypt the data and manage your own keys. And also you can use KMS as a key management infrastructure. If you don't want to use KMS, you can manage it by yourself as well. In server-side encryption, you let AWS to manage your keys for you. Most AWS services like S3, EBS, Redshift provide server-side encryption and they also use KMS behind the scenes. So the point that I want to highlight in this slide is that KMS used in both server-side encryption as well as in client-side encryption. Now we already talked about KMS. So what is it? It is the main service that manages the encryption keys on AWS. Now these keys that AWS KMS manage are called customer master keys or CMK for short. Now I personally like if they refer it as just master keys without that customer part because there are two types of CMKs, customer managed CMKs and AWS managed CMKs. So the name is a bit confusing, but we'll talk about that later. Now AWS KMS store these CMKs or customer master keys in hardware appliances called HSM or hardware security modules. Now these HSMs are tamper-free devices. So if anybody try to tamper with it, 
it's going to delete all the keys that it has stored. So it's quite secure and it is compliant with many security standards like FIPS 140-2. Now AWS makes sure those encryption keys never leaves this hardware plans. So if it is never leaving the hardware plan, so how are we going to interact with it? For that, we are going to use KMS API. Now KMS is integrated with most of the AWS services, like I already mentioned S3, EBS, Kinesis, etc. The main reason is that most AWS that deals with data, they support encryption. So in order to support encryption, they have to talk with or work with KMS. And also, the KMS is integrated with CloudTrail. This allows you to monitor the usage of your keys. For instance, you can see who used my key, for what operation did they perform with the key, etc. And this is very important to comply with different regulations. Now, we already discussed about CMK, so customer master keys, which is the only type of encryption keys that KMS manages. And those keys are stored in HSMs and they never leave the region or in fact they never leave the hardware security module itself. Now here's the thing about CMKs. They can only encrypt maximum of 4 kilobytes of data. So what if you want to encrypt hundreds of megabytes of data? Then you have to use something called data keys. So data keys is the second type of key I introduced to you in this video. Now these data keys are generated from a particular CMK or customer master key. So they have this relationship and you can generate many data keys out of one customer master key. Now look at the diagram at the left side. Now here is the CMK that is inside KMS and I can create one of these CMKs using AWS KMS console, AWS SDKs or CLI. Now I have a large amount of data to be encrypted and I can't simply use this CMK. So I need a data key. So I go ahead and ask my CMK to generate a data key for me. So I can use that data key to encrypt my large amount of data. So I make a call to the KMS API and then KMS will send me not just one but two version of the data key. Now one of that data key version is encrypted by the KMS. So we call it encrypted data key and the other one is the decrypt version of it or the plain text version of it. So what I do then is I use this plain text data key to encrypt my large amount of data and as soon as I'm done with the encryption, I will delete this plain text data key. Because if I keep this plain text data key that I use to encrypt my large amount of data together with that encrypted data, then if anybody found this plain text data key, they can easily decrypt it. I don't want that happening. So I remove it immediately. Now instead, I will store the encrypted version of that data key together with that encrypted data, or we call it ciphertext. Now this diagram shows how I used my plain text data key to encrypt large amount of data. Now this plain text data is, let's assume this is the large amount of data that I have to encrypt. So once I encrypt it with my plain text data key, it outputs the ciphertext, or this is the encrypted data. And no one can understand the content of this ciphertext. It is like totally scrambled. So after encrypting this, I will remove this plain text key and I will store the encrypted version of the data key together with this ciphertext. By the way, you can use uh, OpenSSL or AWS Encryption SDK to do this encryption process outside AWS. I'll show that in the demos in the next video. So now the question is, how do I decrypt this ciphertext? Because no one can understand this unless otherwise it is decrypted. And we have removed the plain text data key that is used to encrypt this as well. So if I want to decrypt it again, I again need the same plain text data key. But instead what I have is the encrypted version of this plain text data key. So what I will do is, I will take that encrypted version of that data key and call KMS and ask it to decrypt and send me the plain text version of it. Now don't forget, when we ask for the data key in the first place from the CMK, it sent me both the plain text version and the encrypted version of it. Now this encrypted version is encrypted by the CMK. So since that CMK is inside the KMS, 
Now KMS knows how to decrypt it using the same CMK. So KMS will send me the plain text data key without an issue. So I can use this plain text data key to decrypt my cipher text. Now this is how KMS works and it is vital to understand this process. Now in the next video, I will go straight to the demos. So thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.